like his name and his music. His face, decades later, is still familiar. It has appeared on everything from lunchboxes to postage stamps. This is actually the original artwork from the Mark Stutzman stamp that the post office released in 1993. This stamp sold 500 million copies. It's the greatest selling stamp in the history of the U.S. Postal Service. Warren Perry is curator of One Life, Echoes of Elvis, at the National Portrait Gallery. It's perhaps possible that Elvis is one of the most recognized human beings in all of history. Love me tender. Love me After his sweet. death in 1977, Elvis Never continued to inspire artists, young and old. Since Elvis's death, people have taken Elvis and put him into a lot of motifs. Elvis as a soldier component, the Elvis as a patriot, Elvis as a as a boy who loved his mom. You ain't nothing but a hound dog. And of course, Elvis, the king of rock and roll, who lived in a mansion and enjoyed fancy automobiles and other good things in life. What we've tried to do here at the National Portrait Gallery is pay tribute to Elvis on the occasion of his 75th birthday with the more fun-spirited, the, the encomium-like works of art rather than the, the negative and the, the mean-spirited works. At the museum, TV broadcasts and newspaper headlines are the core of the exhibit called Elvis, his groundbreaking, hip-shaking, news-making story. We look at this exhibit through how the news media played a role in Elvis's career. Patty Rule was a writer on the exhibit. She says the critics didn't always rave. They called Elvis talent-free. Uh, the New York Times said that he was, was vulgar. Um, they said his movements belonged in a bordello. Then he went to Hollywood again. The critics weren't big fans of his movies, but the public um, were so much fans of Elvis. And his concerts in Las Vegas um, in 1969 broke all records. The 1972 concert where he wore this costume was a newsmaker in itself. His Aloha from Hawaii concert was the first concert broadcast live to more than 40 countries. She says more than 1.5 billion people saw that concert. Many of the objects are on loan from Graceland, Elvis's mansion. They document both his personal and professional life. Elvis was drafted into the army in 1957 and served for two years. There are objects here from his life as a soldier. Years later, when he met President Nixon, he wore this velvet jacket. He walked up to the Nixon White House and said he wanted to meet with the president, and a stunned guard actually got him in to meet with President Nixon. He wanted to be enlisted in the war on drugs. This badge was a memento of that meeting. Ironically, Elvis died of an overdose of prescription drugs. Rule says more than 30 years after his death, people are still interested in Elvis. We were afraid that perhaps he would only appeal to a certain generation, the baby boomers who grew up with Elvis and loved his music so. But we're seeing young people come to the exhibit. Well, that's all right, mama. That's all right for you. She says some even listen to his music. That's all right. Susan Logue, UA News, Washington. That's all right.